Good afternoon, Lake Erie Council. Uh, I'm Jared Blund, your Firelands Camp Director, and I'm here today with special guest Mary. Hey, Mary, how are you doing? Hi, Jared. I'm doing great. How are you? I am fantastic now that we've got our den meeting going here. Sorry for the delay, everybody. We're facing some technical difficulties. But uh, we are here today to do a den meeting for our Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts and uh, exploring the Maestro Adventure. And we've invited Mary to be here with us because Mary is a very musical person. Mary you used to teach music in school, right? I did. Before I was a Lake Erie Council executive, I spent most of my time doing and practicing music. Well, that's awesome. I'm so glad to have you here today and to uh, teach a little bit about music and making, uh, making musical instruments and uh, writing songs. That's all the kinds of stuff that we're going to do today. So hopefully all of you joining us are excited for a fun uh, meeting for, for everybody. I'm excited. And uh, Mary, I just want to say a uh, fantastic job on, on the uh, Scott is Reverend service the other night. Your voice is beautiful and it was a very moving service. So if you haven't checked that out already, I hope you all check out the Scott is Reverend service that was put on last week. Thank you, Jared. Yes, it was really nice to be a part of such a great service with some really cool scouters from across not just our council, but some other places as well. Absolutely. We had uh, quite the showing. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, while uh, our Weeble of Scouts are joining our meeting here today, we have a little gathering activity. And Mary, I think you're going to play some tunes for us to guess, right? I am. I'm going to play a couple on a kazoo. So I have a kazoo here. Um, kazoos are also a really fun instrument that are pretty easy to make, almost with very little materials needed. So maybe we'll talk about that in a little bit too. But here's a couple. I think I know that, that tune. That certainly rings a bell from back to uh, when I started uh, doing music in school as well. But let's I'm give sure. our Weeble Scouts a, a chance to comment in the, uh, the, the comment box below, see if you guys can name that tune. You want to play it one more time for us? Sure, absolutely, Jared. Very cool. Let's see if anybody here is uh, able to comment and see if they can name that tune with us. Um, if I remember right, that is Hot Cross Buns. It is, it is. So you said that when you were learning music, you, you, did you play a lot of hot cross buns when you first started playing music? I did, and I don't know why everybody starts with that tune. Can you tell me why? Um, it's actually, well, especially since I do recall that your first instrument was trumpet. So, that's, right. so that's very easy with the trumpet because it's you know the first three notes that you tend to learn. And it just so happens that it goes nicely along uh, with just those three notes. And it's kind of nice that you can have a whole tune with just three notes. So three notes can get you started with a whole song. They sure can. All right, well, let's go on to the next one. All right. <laughs> way more than three notes, but still a tune that I think most of them will know. We'll go one more time, just so we get another chance to hear it. And I can do one not on the kazoo in case it's just too hard to hear. What other instrument do you have there for us? Well, I have a clarinet here for us. I'll do this over here. See if we know that tune. Ooh, I definitely recognize that from a popular movie and from our theme at camp last summer. 
Yeah, do, do you think we need it one more time for just in case we were on the tip of our tongue there? Yeah, let's do it again. All right. <laughs> All right, are we doing any more Name That Tune or is that gonna be it for this round? Mm, I think we can do one more. We're having some audio difficulties there, so maybe we can get this last one. But it sounds like they can hear you now. Okay. Well. From Prehistoric, uh, not Prehistoric Park, that was the camp tune. Uh, Jurassic Park, that's what it's called. Yes, 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 that was Jurassic Park. Fantastic, sorry about the audio everybody, but I think we've got it figured out now. Okay, well, what about another instrument? Okay. Oh, 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 hold on. Sorry, sometimes you have to try again. <laughs> Mm, that makes me want to fall asleep. A little bit. Sounds like that was a right on right away, Jared. <laughs> well, let's not fall asleep because we have a lot more fun things to do. We sure do. Well, thanks for everybody for joining us. Uh, we're about to get started into the uh, the main portion of our den meeting here, but we want to open it up the way we do for all of our den meetings, and that's with the Pledge of Allegiance, the Scout Oath, and the Scout Law. So I've got my American flag here behind me and my little music studio and uh be glad if you guys can join me in singing the pledge of allegiance if you've got uniform on you can put your scout sign up in a salute or your hand over your heart and uh, we'll say the pledge of allegiance i pledge allegiance to the flag of the united states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all and i'll go into the scout oath you can't see my sign, but it's up there. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country and to obey the scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. And finally, the scout law. A scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent, too. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Oh, my cat decided that it was his turn to sit in the chair. All right. Oh, Senor Dwangata was a cat. All right, so today we are doing the Maestro lesson for our Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts. And you know, there's noise all around us, right? And what changes noise into music? Like, what is that? that difference between just noise and what makes it, it, it music. Maybe you guys can comment in the, uh, the, the box below, but what do you think the difference between noise and music is, Mary? Um, the main difference between noise and music to me is a combination of two things. It's intent and also it's the listener because what is music to me can definitely sound like noise to another person. I know sometimes I'm really, really happy to be outside and to hear the bird songs and to hear them chirping, but every now and then, on the rare occasion that I've gotten to sleep in, sometimes I'm not as happy about the bird song in the morning, and it kind of <laughs> sounds like noise to me. So again, it's, it's the intent and how the listener perceives the noise. Kind of reminds me of the uh, art lesson we did the other day with uh, a different den meeting where... Um, abstract art is kind of about the the observer. It's it's what you uh, you take in from the piece of art that kind of makes it special to you. Absolutely, no, Ooh. definitely. Um, there have actually been some really cool arrangements and some really neat composers over the years who have taken sounds and things that happen just innately around them and turned them into songs. It's pretty neat. Hmm. Like, and uh, also, like nature sounds and everyday life sounds? 
yeah, a lot of everyday nature sounds, a lot of everyday like city sounds, you know, there's even the honking of different car horns, it's still a pitch. So you can turn it into different things. And I know maybe some of the parents at home, maybe not so much all of our weeblos right now, but maybe if your parents let you or they look with you on YouTube later, you can find some cool YouTube videos of people making homemade percussion instruments. There was a group called Stomp that used to make all kinds of uh, music out of random sounds and occurrences. Very cool. And actually that's a good segue into what we're doing next because uh, some of the things that we're gonna work on today are making some instruments from items you might have at home and uh, learn how to play some music either on those instruments or instruments you already have uh, in your possession already. And then we'll talk a little bit about mixing music and how uh, you can put different pieces of music together to create one sound or one song. And I think we're also going to hear a song uh, with some lyrics and how to write lyrics for me later, Mary, too. Is that right? Absolutely. Fantastic. So hopefully uh, by the end of this lesson today, we'll have uh, shown you how to make a, a simple, inexpensive instrument from some materials around your house. Uh, we'll show you how creating music is a great way to share your feelings and express your ideas to other people. And, you know, you always want to be courteous when you're playing music as well, the point of the scout law, especially when you're in, in, our, in our homes and maybe have neighbors close by, you need to be cur courteous about when you're playing your music and how loud. You don't want to disturb your neighbors when it's late at night or something playing your new, brand new instrument. Fantastic. All right, well, you, are you ready to show a couple instruments that we can make at home? I am. So I have a couple instruments to show you that, well, when you're making homemade things, you're basically going to be making something that's a representation of a real instrument. So you can't just, especially since we're all supposed to be staying at home right now, you can't just go out and go get a brand new drum, or you can't just go get a new uh, set of maracas or a tambourine. I have some really cool shakers and this is a gourd so you can see when it was dried out they kind of scored it a little bit but if you listen it makes a nice fun shaking sound. I have some small little guys they do that too but if you can't go out what was that Jared? A uh, slightly different pitch because it was a little bit smaller. Oh yeah totally and this one it has a different pitch too. Oh yeah I hear it. Because it doesn't have the big hit in the middle like that one. So that brings up a very good point. If you're going to make a shaker, depending on what you're going to put in your shaker makes a huge difference on the way it's going to sound. So I just took a regular mason jar, just like a little jelly jar. It totally could have had some type of jelly or maybe even a peanut butter jar if you don't have any glass jars around. Mm -hmm. uh, that'll do too. This, these I just filled with some dried beans. So they were left over from dinner the other day. I didn't turn them into soup and I went ahead and just put them in. But that makes a nice little fun shaker sound. And if you hold your finger against the metal lid to make it stop from vibrating, it makes a different sound as well. No, so now like it's that high pitch. Yeah, absolutely. So what other things can you think of that or that's in your kitchen right now that you could put into either a jelly jar or a peanut butter jar or something to make some sounds? Mm, that's a great question. So if you are, are following along with us, we'd love to see your comments below. So think about things that are in your, your kitchen that you could turn into a percussion instrument or maybe into a, a reed instrument or something that you can blow into. We'd love to see what you guys got. I found something from my kitchen, Mary. Yeah. Straw that I'm going to turn into an instrument here. Okay. So, then, if you are, oh, go ahead. Then you can duet with my kazoo. There we go. That's a good idea. So, if you're following along in the description of this video, there are some instructions and some materials that you can gather for a few different homemade materials. And the one that I'm going to show here is the glovophone. So, this is going to use a straw, a glove, some tape. And then something that hopefully you have in, in well supply and or toilet paper rolls or uh, paper towel rolls, just some, some sort of cardboard tube. And those are all the materials we need to put together this instrument. So I, uh, I went ahead and got one a little bit ready a little bit earlier, so a little bit faster. But the way to make this instrument is you take your glove 
and you just stick a tiny little hole with a pair of scissors or a knife in the end of the index finger. Just in a little tiny one, just like that. Okay. You're gonna take your straw and put it through the inside of the glove and stick it into that finger so that uh, three to four inches are sticking out of the end of the pointer finger there. So you got about an inch inside and a couple inches outside. We're gonna try and make this airtight though. So that's where your tape comes in handy. So take a piece of tape and wrap it really good around where you made that hole to stick the, uh, the straw in there so you can make an air, airtight seal. And see, I'm just kind of wrapping it around the straw, around the glove, hopefully, so no air can escape from there. All right. Now your uh, cardboard tube comes into play. This is where I got confused earlier. So also in the description is a video on how to do this with a little bit longer piece of cardboard and, and the guy does a pretty good job of explaining it as well. What you're gonna do is stick the wrist of the glove around one end of this cardboard tube and use a rubber band to kind of stick it on there. That's kind of hard to wrap this around with this glove hanging down so you can stick that inside the, the tube to keep it out of the way for now. It's again, a very helpful hint. Yeah. Again, you want to make sure you have a really airtight seal. So I'm going to wrap this rubber band around the glove and around the tube once, and I'll twist it and do it a second time so I know it stays on there. There we go. One and I'm gonna try and get it all nice and flat so there's not very many wrinkles. And now I can pull that glove back out like this. Now to play nice. this instrument, all you've gotta do is hold this tube up and down, and you're gonna pull the glove kind of out towards you so that it kind of makes a seal on the bottom of this tube. You see that? Now, when I blow in the end of this tube, it's gonna inflate the, uh, the glove. And what we want it to do is on that membrane, that tight seal that we made on the bottom for it to kind of vibrate because that's what makes noises, right? It's all kinds of vibrations. Sure is. Well, let's see if it works. If you don't get noise right away, just try and pull a little bit tighter so there are not any uh, any wrinkles against the bottom of your tube there. Having a little bit of difficulty. But what's that Cub Scout motto? Try our best. Do your best. Yeah. There we go. Hey, we got it. So it's kind of like playing a horn. Nice. So that's an instrument that you can make uh, at your own home. If you get a long tube like a paper towel roll, you can also, uh, with parent supervision, use a knife and poke a hole into the side of your, uh, into the side of your tube, and use that as kind of a, a finger hole, like you would on a clarinet or a flute. And you just cover it. You can make different pitches as well. I don't know if awesome. You made your very own homemade woodwind instrument. I did. Apparently it was a one and done. <laughs> That's all right. My kazoo was also having some difficulties with the paper after the very first time playing. <laughs> but that's kind of the thing about woodwinds. I mean, even the clarinet that I was playing, I had to make sure that the reed was nice and wet because you were right. That's how all the sound happens is the vibration. So when you made that membrane across the bottom of the tube, that created the, the skin or the vibration spot for the sound to happen. It's the same thing like when you have, if you're going to make your shakers or homemade drums, Instead of using the metal lid, you could take 
the glove like Jared had and use that on the top part. And oh. then you can kind of have a little bit of a membrane for your drum as well. Hmm, kind of like a, like a, 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 a tim timpani, right? Yeah, like a timpani, some type of membrane foam. Kind of like a, a tambourine uh, on the middle part. I have one of those somewhere. Here we go. You have all kinds of instruments there. I do have a few random auxiliary percussion instruments. So you have the actual membrane for the tambourine part too. Ah, so maybe you can put some bells on the outside of the uh, uh, of your maraca thing, and then you have two different two different instruments in one. There you go, two for one. There you go, a one scout band. Exactly. So if you make your own musical instrument at home, we'd love to see what you make, either from our instructions or from anything else you can find around your house. Uh, I'd love for you to take pictures of those and post them in the comments or on our Facebook page with hashtag scouting at home. And uh, if you do that, that means you have completed a requirement 2A for your maestro adventure. Yay. For the next one, uh, if you have an instrument at home that you can play uh, a tune on, so you have a couple of different pitches, either from an instrument that you have or an instrument that you've made, uh, that would be requirement 2C, to play two different tunes. And Mary, are you going to play some tunes for us? I'm going to play some tunes for you. I can't wait to hear them. All right. Ooh, Aaron, Texas, the holes or quarters are used to change the pitches. You're absolutely correct. Yeah, absolutely. I, I like that you made that. That's a very fun instrument. So what would you name that instrument, Jared? Well, they call it the Glovophone, but that makes me think of like a, like a phonathon. I'm going to call it the, hmm, the glove horn. The glove horn? Glove I like that. That's very fun. Okay. So those of you who didn't get to see the clarinet earlier, this is a clarinet. This is what we were talking about. So this is one of our woodwind instruments. And as I was talking about earlier, it has this reed. So this is the little guy that goes right on top here. And that's where all of the vibration happens. And that's how you get the sound for this. So a woodwind is all of our clarinets and saxophones and flutes and oboes. I think it's so it has cool. a lot of low notes, but they have high ones too. What was that, Jared? I love how it's that little piece of wood that kind of makes the whole magic happen. It really is. Well, it's because, you know, little things count for big, big magic sometimes. Exactly. Um, so earlier we were playing the theme from Jurassic Park, so I'll play a little bit more of that. Jurassic Park was used to be one of my favorite dinosaur movies, but dinosaurs I kind of was obsessed with when I was younger. <laughs> I was very, very upset when I found out that uh, my favorite animal was an animal I was never going to get to see. Oh, no. I've always liked that music, too, though. It's, uh, it can be really calming. Uh, I've actually used it to, to kind of listen or read or study to before in the past. It's just uh, it's very easy listening. It is very easy listening. And what's really cool about that song is, it, well, it's actually a piece because musical songs are only a song if there's lyrics. So we'll talk about some lyrics and songs here in a moment. But the person who composed that piece of music is John Williams. So since you can't really go out into the world right now and go see concerts, if you have some time and you want to look up some cool musical performances, you can YouTube some John Williams music. And I bet you'll know a lot of the music that you hear because a lot of his music are used in soundtracks for music for movie scores. Hmm. He's, uh, he's had quite the musical career. Oh yeah, definitely. 
All right, so that was our first tune on the, the clarinet. What are you playing for us next? Well, I was going to show you guys a little piano action. I actually have all of my fun little maracas and things on here right now, so I might have to move that. But some of the neat things about being able to play music is being able to create music too. So it's fun just to be able to read music, but also to be able to kind of make stuff up, especially maybe with what you have going on right now, maybe you have a lot of feelings about staying home. And I don't know how I'm going to hold this, so it might be interesting for a second. You might have to just not see me play. Hearing you will be just fine. Very pretty. I figured we needed a little bit of nice and pretty right now because it was snowing this morning and although it is kind of pretty, I, I needed a little more sunshine today, so. What is that piece called? Um, that's called Scouting at Home with Jared at 5.05 p.m. Did you make that up? Yeah, just right now. <laughs> Wow, that's really cool. I like that it had both the, uh, you know, your chords and your individual notes. It's more than I could do on the spot. Ah, oh, well, I, I can do a little bit of more of that on the spot than uh, sight reading on the spot. Because whereas I am able to play lots of different things, um, piano was one of the things that I always had to make sure I practiced a lot to be able to play for performances. So it's one of those things you got to make sure you have all the time spent in to get the result that you want. I understand. Well, uh, Jane says that she also plays the piano and uh, we have a couple of recorder players in there. I think, uh, well, Jane and Aaron also play recorder. So they are our instrumental, uh, our instrumental accompanists here on our dumb meeting. Yeah, awesome. So do you have any other tips for our scouts who would be performing their two songs to their family or if they can do it virtually to their den and what they can be doing to have a nice performance? Well, the best performances are the ones where you just don't stop till you're done because sometimes things happen and you just got to keep going. And if you make a mistake, that's okay because as long as you do your best, then that's really all the, that matters. And kind of what I was just saying beforehand, you know, anytime I had to play piano in front of people, oh man, I always made sure I practiced a lot to make sure that I was really ready to go. But basically, if you're having a good time, they're probably going to have a good time too. So don't be too worried about it. Music is supposed to be having fun. So have some fun with it. I like what you said about uh, not stopping and make a mistake too, because you might, your audience may not even know that there was a mistake made. And if you don't stop to tell them, they're just going to get a guess that's what was supposed to happen. Absolutely. Things happen. <laughs> Great advice. Always do your Cub Scout best. Absolutely. All right. Well, if you play your two uh, tunes on an instrument for your den or for your family, that completes requirement 2C. And uh, the last one about uh, creating music of your own that we're going to go through today is writing a song with words and music and then performing it. So you said earlier that a song is only a song when it has lyrics. I didn't know that. Yes. So technically, a song is a song because of it having lyrics. Otherwise, it's just technically a musical piece. But that's okay. If somebody calls, if you write a really nice musical piece on your recorder or on your piano and you play it for your family and your mom or dad says that's a really nice song, that's okay. You can know, but if you're going to tell them, tell them very nice what it is because you just learned that today. 
<laughs> but it's okay if other people haven't learned that yet either. It's true. You learn something new every day. Absolutely. So I think you have a song that you prepared for us that you wrote some lyrics to. And if you would, uh, wouldn't mind playing that for us, I'd ask our scouts that are following along if they can maybe come up with a title for it for us. Sure. Yes, because you know what? I don't have a title for this yet. So earlier, uh, Jared and I were talking about what I used to tell students when they were beginning to learn how to write music. Mm -hmm. And there's really two different things when you're learning to write music, especially if you're going to write a song, because as we just learned, a song is the song because it has lyrics. So if you're trying to write lyrics for your very first time, mm -hmm. maybe try to write lyrics to a tune of a song you already know really well. And oh. that way you kind of can just switch up uh, the lyrics a little bit. Makes it a little bit easier than trying to come up with something brand new altogether if you have something to start with. Right. Because like the piano play piece that I just played, I just kind of made that up because I wanted to make something that was kind of happy. So I didn't have a lot of minor things in there. I was kind of a little, little reminiscent of the gray out here in Cleveland today. Hopefully it's a little sunnier wherever you guys are at watching today. Mm -hmm. But... I went ahead and kind of went with the first idea there. I took a tune that we all kind of know. Should I tell them what the tune is? I bet everyone's going to know when I start singing it. Go for it. But I went ahead and wrote some lyrics to Old MacDonald Had a Farm. So oh, I here, know too. <laughs> yeah, you know that song too? <laughs> yes. Excellent. So here is my springtime version of this song. I want to sleep and I stayed up late. I don't want to go to school. I'm cozy in bed all snug and warm. I don't want to go to school. But with a quarantine here and a shelter in place there, stay home, stay home, sanitize, but stay home. I changed my mind. I miss my friends. I want to go back to school. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Well, we'll look to see so, if you can come up with a good title for that song. I like how, uh, how it really told a story there. Yeah, and that's, that's really the whole point. You know, some songs, they rhyme like the words match together. Other songs, they don't really have any rhyme to the way the word structure is. They're really just somebody telling a story. Mm -hmm. So... Think about what you want to say. Is there something that's been on your mind for the last few days? Is there anything that you wish you could say? Is there something that, do you miss the classroom hamster and you wish you could talk to it? I mean, maybe that's who your song is to, but you know, you just want to tell a story. That's the whole point of, of a song. And a lot of art altogether is about telling stories or conveying your feelings too. We got your feelings earlier from your, uh, your song without lyrics or your piece without lyrics. Mm -hmm. And now we got some of your thoughts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can't wait to see what some of our scouts' feelings and thoughts have been. Yeah, yeah. We'd love for you to, to share with us your performances. If you can make a recording of it and post it on our Facebook page or here in the comments. And can't wait to see what you guys come up with. We also had a, a suggestion uh, about a good instrument to start with. Uh, I've got a piano here, and, and you just played a piece on the piano uh, not too long ago. We thought that a piano was a really nice place to start when you're creating uh, music on your own, because you can see very visually how high or low the pitches are that you're trying to play. Yeah, it's nice seeing all the notes of the scale laid out in front of you. Mm -hmm. And then maybe a guitar would be a ne the next step up from that if you can uh, uh, get your hands on one that you own or have somebody that uh, that you know that plays guitar that's willing to teach you a little bit because that's very similar in the way that a piano a piano scale works. Can you explain that a little bit? Yeah, so the fret structure on the guitar is basically the way the keys are laid out on a keyboard. So if you know your scales, that goes back to practicing. Mm -hmm. If you know your scales, then you can see visually how it's all laid out right in front of you. It's kind of like being able to see all of the, if you had all your paints in, lined up in the color of the rainbow, you know the order to them. 
Mm -hmm. So when you have all the notes on the keyboard or on your fretboard all laid out in front of you, they're all right there. It's not, it's a little different with like clarinet or with your, you played trumpet. So you can't just see it, all of the notes for a, like a C major scale. You would have to go back and forth between your three valves. Whereas mm -hmm. on the, you know, piano, it's literally just from one C to the next and everything's right there for you. Sorry, my phone probably moved a little too fast. <laughs> yeah, as, as, as you said, I played trumpet uh, throughout school and it, it almost uh, limits me in the way that I think about music because I can only think in one note at a time because I can only play one note at a time on my trumpet. So when I play on the piano, I'm usually just doing things with one hand or if I'm playing on a guitar, I usually just use one string and go up and down the scale. So I have to do a little bit more practicing to learn how to put my hands together. Oh, absolutely. But see, here's the thing, Jared, you use your hands together all the time during the day for other things. So you'll be able to do it this way too. And I was the same way because I played clarinet all through my younger years of school. And it wasn't until college that I started thinking of things quarterly as well. So mm -hmm. it took a lot of kind of retraining my, my ear to think of things differently. But now that it has, it's, it's definitely fun. So there's still time for you, Jared. Well, I appreciate your confidence. Thank you. All right. So if uh, you come up with a song and uh, write some music and some lyrics to it and perform it for your family or den, that is requirement 2G for our maestro. And I just want to share with you, Mary Austin uh, says that your song should be titled No School for Me. No School for Me. All right. I like it. Very good. All right, well, the last thing we're going to go over today in our Maestro adventure is about using a mixer. And uh, we're going to play a short video showing how a mixer is used and what it is used for. But uh, if you already know what a mixer is and would like to comment below on, on how it's used or if you've used one in the past, we'd love to hear from you. Well, let's pull this video up and uh, make sure you can all see and hear it. And then we will maybe talk about how we too have used it in the past as well. So we'll get this up in front of everybody. This is just a YouTube video, and it's actually from a Cub Scout himself. His name is Cub Scout Eric, and he put together a bunch of videos for the Maestro lesson. So uh, after, you're, after you're done with this, you'd like to see other homemade instruments or uh, get a little more information on different parts of this badge, I would definitely encourage you to uh, uh, check out his video series. And this link is also in the description, so if you want to watch it afterwards, you can check it out then too. So when we take a guitar and we plug it into an electronic, this is an amp, but it has two channels, so it works sort of like a mixer. If you imagine this being cut in half, I'm only going into this half of it. So yeah. these knobs right here affect what I'm doing. And these knobs right here would affect someone else. So maybe we would take a microphone and we can plug it into this side. And the cool thing about a mixer is that it would let me have independent control over the guitar on one side and the microphone on the other side. That way, maybe I want to have a little bit more reverb, that's an effect. Um, typically you would have more reverb on vocals than you would have on guitar. So if that's where I like my reverb on my guitar, if I ran a microphone into this side, I might turn this one up, and that would give me more reverb in my microphone than I have on my guitar. And really that's the, the main purpose of a mixer, is to give you independent control like that over two different things. And then, when I get all those dialed in the way I want them separately, I have a master volume. That's the volume for the whole thing. So that'll turn up my guitar and my microphone at the same time, so that maybe I just want it louder in this room. Okay? So a basic uh, overview of what a mixer does is it takes a couple different inputs, puts them into one output, so you can have different pieces of music or microphones, put them together, make some adjustments before it gets out to your audience, and then uh, puts it all together for one thing to hear. Is that kind of a good explanation, Mary? That was a really good explanation. So 
technically what I was playing earlier wasn't a piano. It is a keyboard. And just what Jared was saying, it's kind of dark back here, but if you can see, I had to, in order for the piano, well, the keyboard to actually make sound, it has to be plugged in from the input over there. Mm -hmm. And then it actually comes out of here, out of this speaker on my amp. So that is how it set exactly the way Jared just said. It be, it's, I have it set to certain parameters so that it is the sound and volume and the quality that I'd like it. Mostly that my downstairs neighbors would like it because <laughs> it's not very nice for me to play super loud and not be mindful of other people. It's now, I'm coming over here, I also have an organ, which is a also an electronic keyboard, um, but it's much older, and it has the original cathodes and tubes in the back, because before we had the digital ability to do that, here's where the treble is, the bass, and a little bit of dust, and um, <laughs> that's how that all works. So it's very interesting having you can kind of see the progression there of your analog or your um, your non-digital music uh, creation. And then uh, you've got your amplifier there to make the music sound just the way you want it. And then there are huge mixing boards that you can adjust the volume or the reverberation or echo. Um, how much of one uh, side you want to hear, whether it's the left or the right. Sometimes in music, you can hear more more instruments on the left side of your uh, your ears to the right side. So that, that's a really uh, helpful tool to make the music sound just the way you want it. Oh, absolutely. So what you were just talking about when you go from one side to the other, that's called the pan. And it's super neat because you can almost make it seem like something is swooshed across the screen because <laughs> you hear it from one side and then to the other. And that's a lot of how you get a lot of the movie magic of what we see when you have, when you go to the movies or when you watch them on Netflix currently, since we're all at home. <laughs> but it's, it's really neat, the things that you can make happen that sound like you're really in real life. Well, it's very, very cool. Uh, I know that we use a small mixing board at camp during the summer so we can have our microphones and play some music for entertainment sometimes. We did some karaoke last summer, that was a really big hit. So uh, hopefully we'll be able to do some more of that this summer and I uh, can't wait to get people back out there and uh, keep doing those fun activities. I definitely want to come out and do some karaoke with you this summer. I bet you'd be very good at it. I'm sure everybody is. Sounds like fun. It does. Well, as we come to a close here on our Maestro Adventure today, if there's any last questions or comments that you guys have, we'd love to either answer them live, or if you're not watching live with us, we'll keep an eye on uh, this comment page over the next day or so and, and can answer some questions there. But uh, we want to thank you guys all for participating with us. If you have followed along and you do these activities that we've laid out for you and you make your instrument and perform your music at home, then you'll be able to mark off uh, requirements 1B, 2A, 2C and 2G in your scout book. And uh, if you want to do requirement 1A, which is to listen to a live performance, it might seem hard to do that right now while we're uh, doing our scouting at home, but there are lots of places that are doing performances for people over the internet. And one place that I found is called the Rock and Roll Playhouse, and they're doing live performances every single day. So there's a link for that in the description, and I encourage you to watch one of their live performances and think about all the things that we talked about today between uh, lyrics and music and expressing your feelings and uh, your thoughts and how they might have used a mixing board to put it all together uh, and how all of that happens in, in one space for a live performance. Um, I also have in the description uh, the rest of those Cub Scout Eric videos for the Maestro Adventure so you can learn a, bit, a little bit more on your own at home. And uh, we definitely encourage you to stay tuned to our website, lecbsa.org, for more scouting at home activities. And we hope you'll participate from home in our Camp Roll coming up later this month on April 25th. Are you going to be there, Mary? I definitely am. Very cool. You can uh, sign up for free on our website. You can order a patch if you want, and there'll be scouting activities, cooking challenges, and uh, guest speakers all day at our Camp Roll. Not from just here in Lake Erie Council, but from scouts all over the world. We have people participating from different countries already which is pretty cool. That's super cool. 
it looks like they're asking about uh, repeating their requirements that this met. Uh, so that was 1B, 2A, 2C, and 2G. Uh, and you can check those out uh, on scoutbook.com. And uh, I've got a link for those uh, up in the description as well. So you can see exactly what, uh, what, what, was, what needs to be covered for this Maestro adventure. Any last thoughts, Mary? I'm really excited to see everybody's song and musical piece submissions. And I'm really interested to see what cool instruments they came up with. I know I'm, I'm going to kind of have to go through my cupboards and see what else I can kind of make up. I, I might have to make a rain stick here with some rice in a minute. It sounds like a plan. Well, thank you so much for sharing your talents with us and for uh, spending some time with me to do this Maestro Adventure. I really appreciate it. Oh, it was my pleasure. It was super fun. Can't wait to come out to camp and sing with you some more. Sounds like a plan. Well, thanks again, everybody. Stay home, stay safe, and uh, we'll have a good evening. Bye, everybody. Bye. No sound. <laughs>